Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's OTGW. It's discussion time, and uh, Father's Day, Mother's Day just passed. I hope everyone celebrated a little bit. Did you? I <laughs> did for Mother's Day, yeah. and for Father's Day, yeah. I brought home some egg tarts. Yeah. I think oh, Father's, Day, okay. Father's Day kind of gets left out sometimes. Yeah, yeah. why is that? It's always about like, it should, be, it should be equal. It should be. Well, anyway, um, as you might have guessed from today's video topic, we want to talk about some sacrifices that our parents made. Um, because I think being Asians, um, there are a lot of even common sacrifices that Asian parents would make right. uh, for all of us and for us to have a better life. Um, so I think a lot of these you guys are able to relate to because, you know, sometimes the story gets, uh, it's the same story from a lot of Asian kids. Right. So what do you think, buddy? Oh, I go first? You go first. I would say like between my parents, because I, I don't know my dad that well, and um, we, we live apart, but my mom made a lot of sacrifices for me. So when they, when they, uh, and, and my dad, so when they, when we first moved to the States, the United States, I was six and basically uh, like, you know, we had no money. And uh, my mom would actually work three jobs, three jobs uh, to provide for us. So she would cook, she would clean, she would literally like in the early in the morning, she had like a paper route. So she would do like any jobs, right? But she was an artist, so she would do a paper route in the morning, like really early, then like drive me to school. And then she would go to a day job where she was, mm -hmm. a, was an artist for like eight, nine hours. And then on the weekends, she would uh, go to the beach and draw uh, portraits on the beach. So three different jobs just so that she could put food on the table. Because my, why did my dad make money? Well, he was a student at the time. So he was going to school. He was getting his master's and then his PhD. So he really didn't have time to work a job. Even at the time, I'd be like, wow, like she, she did the three jobs and then she would come home and she would cook for us and then clean. Sometimes I help clean, but you know, like she would cook for us. So Aww. that's one of the major sacrifices that I'll, I'll never forget that. Like my mom just basically like, just like going, working crazy and, and making sure that, and she never complained. We had really chill parents because your yeah. parents are not like typical Asian parents. Yeah. They're really not. They're really not. Like they let me do everything. I mean, sure. They made me practice the piano. Like they, ma they made me take like, you know, classes and stuff, but I, I like those things. Yeah. Also on top of that, you know, like she would, uh, uh, she, the sacrifices she made, like obviously she wanted me to do well in school. Uh, unfortunately I didn't, but, uh, but because she also, anything I had an interest in, she would be really supportive and, and like take me to that class. So, so I developed an interest in instruments. So she would like, you know, pay for the lessons and take me to class, pick me up. Um, she would send me to like art class. She was an artist, but you know, like I liked to be in class, but to learn it and be with the other kids, she would take me to Chinese school. She would take me to like sports. She would, you know, so basically like in addition to, you know, providing for our family, she would also go the extra mile to make sure that I, I became a well-rounded kid because she didn't want to just see me like, you know, sit home and study all day. So she basically was not an Asian parent. <laughs> basically was not. And, and, and honestly, like, for and when I look back and I'm like, how, like, she was like super mom to me. Because how do you like, how do you do all those things, you know, like without it, without basically a dad there? And then, I mean, my dad was there, but he wasn't really there. And like, and basically like do all of those things and more and never complain. Like, I'm like, dude, this woman's like super mom. Okay, what yeah. about you, Yi? Um, I have a, like several things I feel like my parents sacrificed for my well-being. Well, first of all, I feel like um, when I was younger, like my mom, uh, she was a housewife actually. But the thing is, she's actually a really career-driven woman. Mm. Like, um, but basically she gave up a career to like raise me um, because she has this theory, which I think is true, that when you spend more time with your child when they're younger, you guys form a closer bond and it will be better for the child's growth and development. So basically before the age of 10, she, you know, was a stay-at-home mom, she cooked, she cleaned, and she like always made like super nutritional breakfasts, and she always bought me these like really nutritional snacks, like fruits and everything. It was like, I feel like I was always pampered. She basically, 10 years of her life, she did nothing, like, and basically just focused on me. And then my mom, obviously she got a job, and then, you know, now she's like the superpower career woman, because that's kind of 
what she's like born to do. Right. So like it just means all the more that she like sacrificed that to, mm -hmm. to be right. with me, right? And, mm -hmm. and support my dad and everything like that. And then um, when she went, when she had her career, like I wanted to move back to America, right? Because I just could not stand the Chinese school system anymore. Um, at least you know from we did this, this video about that, and you can check that out. But basically, <laughs> um, it was tough, and I was like, yeah, man, I really want to go back to um, America and she was like well but your dad and I already have our career set in China like if you want to go back I feel like you you would have to go back alone mm -hmm. right and then and then she was kind of like really upset about the idea because she like everybody else wants their daughters and their sons to live close to them and um, I haven't visited her like ever <laughs> no because she she and my dad come over here but um you know I know it makes her really upset like she calls me all the time and she's like oh why don't you like you know come back to China for work or something like that and I'll always be like well mom you know this is my life I kind of want to stay in America I mean she complains but you know she kind of let me do it because if she were like really like strict about it she would be like no I'm cutting you off and if you don't come back, then I'm not going to support you to be to, to do certain things, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah, but she, even though she has all these complaints and she's clearly unhappy about it, she basically let me do it. And my dad, who's like this kind of like really like macho dude, right? He's the kind of guy who believes in like bringing the, the money back to the family. Right. Like, mm. he, like he'll, he'll never let his children worry about money, but he won't tell you that he loves you ever. Right. And he, he's upset about it, but he's never really complained. He still supports me, mm. you know? So that's all I can ask for, right? right. Okay. I think it's kind of unique because right. you grew up uh, away from them, so right, right. you spend mm. a lot of your time away right, from right. them, right. which is typically right. not the case in a lot of Asian families. Okay, well, Mia, <laughs> let's hear, let's hear your, your parents' sacrifices. I was born and raised in Indonesia, and um, I didn't really have the typical immigrant family stories mm -hmm. because my parents were also born and raised in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. To speak about sacrifices, it was, um, I guess it was really hard on my mom also. Like Danny is talking about super mom, right? right? I also feel like that my mom is a super mom. Um, because when I was about 16, I think, uh, in late 90s basically, like they decided that Indonesia was not a safe place for us to stay in. Oh. Especially being a Chinese Indonesian because mm -hmm. at the time they were like targeted and especially for like, girls. So they had to ship us over to Malaysia, me and my younger sister. And uh, my mom had to like live with us for the first three months because obviously they were worried. At the time she was working, but then she had to like get away from it and also making sure that we were okay in, in a foreign country. And so she had to be away from her job and also her like friends and whatnot and basically just taking care of us in Malaysia for three months. Um, and I think it was also because at the time we were going through some rough time, like financial wise. So they had to work really, really hard in order to provide for us in, in Malaysia. And then afterwards, I, um, I think it got a little bit too hard. So my sister had to go back, and then like I had to stay there by myself. And um, because I was like the eldest in the family, so I had to like kind of blaze the path a little bit. And then after that, she also sent me to the US basically like being f far away from your families but I think like what you said like I agree like it's not just like financial uh, sacrifices but also like mentally like, emotionally right yeah, it's, it's like tough on everybody what so, about you all sure. right Mike Mike <laughs> turn Mike turn so I think my story is is pretty very typical Asian. Mm -hmm. um, my my parents were both government officials. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was actually a high level government official. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you know the story was my dad you know came here for school. Mm -hmm. So there's he was part of that whole scholar movement right. when a lot of Chinese came to like in the universities 80s. in the eighties. Yeah, right. But at the time we had a pretty good life in China. You know my mom made a lot of money. My dad was like teaching at a college. We're, we're, right. we're pretty good. But they, you know, the reason they moved was because of me. Because they were like, in the future, you know, I would have a better future if they moved. So in spite of the comfortable lifestyle in China, we came here. And of course, uh, my dad was in college mm -hmm. um, as a, you know, as a grad student. That doesn't mean there's money, so he had to work. Right. So after school, he had to work as a waiter. Right. And then my mom had to go work. She's like a 30-something-year-old Chinese lady who right. can't speak a lick of English. Right, right. What's she going to do? Right. So she had to go work at this uh, like uh, manufacturing shop where she sold like clothing, right. like military clothing or something. Yeah. And I remember one day, like, you know, we had to go pick her up because a needle actually like went through her finger. Oh! Um, 
we literally lived in a place. I'm not. Even, I'm not even joking. It was called China House because only Chinese people lived there. <laughs> oh right, my right, god! Right. And we lived in a place where all three of us lived in a studio apartment. Right. And it was so small that I remember there's a picture my dad took where he took it like this, and in the picture you can see his foot. Because that's how small it was. Oh my god! That was tough because right. that's the first part of the migration because uh, right. someone had to someone had to stay in school. Right. Mm. And the other partner had to go find a really low end job that's to right. make the family kind of live. I didn't have my first pizza mm. until I was eleven. So I came to the country at eight. What? I didn't have my first slice of pizza until eleven, and I remember that because my mom <laughs> took me to this Domino's, and I was like. I was like, I really want a pizza, but we can never afford it. Right. So Aww. one day she took me to Domino's, and I had a cheese pizza. Yeah. And, she, and, and I remember, as I'm like, Mom, what you? she's like, well, I was like, why don't you have some? She's like, no, I'm not hungry. But obviously she probably was hungry, but right. we could only Aww. afford one small cheese pizza. Right, right. And I still remember that was the best tasting cheese pizza I ever had in my wow. life. Wow. And after we moved away from Tennessee <laughs> to like, you know, uh, Iowa, and both my parents, or sorry, Minnesota, both of my parents were like waiters. We never bought anything, we never had anything. My mom made my clothing and finally they scraped up enough money, they bought a restaurant and then it was like hard work all the time, right. 365 a year, right. just constantly working. And that restaurant didn't make any money, we right. lost our restaurant. Um, and then like we went and bought another one and that one actually made some money. But until then, like, you know, the, our lives were like yeah, just pretty horrible. Poor. Sometimes I, I asked them before, I'm like, well, why did we leave? Because, you know, we had a good life in China. And they were like, well, it's for you because in the future, you're going to thank us because right. uh, you'll have a much better chance of making it here than you would in China. Um, but anyway, so even like lately, I was like trying to give some money to them. I'm like, hey, you, know, you guys bought me this stuff. Let me give you some money. Mm -hmm. right. You know, so like, even to this day, they're like, you know, it's family. You can't talk about money. There's mm -hmm. no right. owing us anything. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I even had a dream last night. I kid you not. Because recently, my, you know, I went through a career change. Mm -hmm. And uh, my parents are, you know, my dad's actually, you know, trying to be as supportive as he can. Right. My mom was like freaking out. Right. And uh, last night I had a dream where, you know, I was, uh, we were walking together and I felt like, you know, and she, she was, I felt this closeness, you know, the mother and son, like, right. emotions. Right. And, I, and I gave her a ride on the back of my bike. Oh my God! Like the, you know the Chinese style <laughs> oh, bike yeah, where you yeah, give yeah. people yeah. a ride on yeah. the back? Yeah. Look, do I care and love them? Of course I do. Yeah. I love my parents. Yeah. Of course I do. Wait, wait, what? Say that again. He lies. Of course I do. Yeah. Yeah. He lies. Say friend. that again. And, and, yeah. and to think about the sacrifices they made for me, you know, obviously, um, I feel like I have been most of my life you know, grateful. Almost right. did it. Um, <laughs> Almost did. It's, it's hard for me to showcase that. Right. But I mean, like, as much as you know, like your your parents did for you, like obviously, like you recognize it. But there were some tough times too, and. You know, it's it's normal for you not to be able to like fully express yourself at this age with them. Yeah. Well, I, I just hope that you know um, the reason we brought up this topic is obviously a lot of people out there like us right. have trouble expressing gratitude and emotions exactly. towards their parents. Right. And so we wanted to showcase, you know, uh, right. to you guys, uh, you know, what right. we feel, what we appreciate, right. the sacrifices that our parents have done for us, and hopefully we can all express that to our parents. So hopefully you can as well. We're gonna do. Why don't you show your parents this video? See, uh, the reason I can say things in this video is they'll never is watch perfect. YouTube. This is perfect. What's you? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, like, this is. My mom doesn't need to see this because, like, you know, we grew up like she knows. Like, yeah, I, I can't have my parents watch this. You know, I just can't. Sorry. Like, Let's wrap this up, and uh, hopefully you guys uh, can go say something to your parents, or at least appreciate what your parents has done. Uh, you know, just take a minute, think about all the sacrifices they made for Definitely. you. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. See you later. Bye. Later. Bye.